everyone, it's Louise with Louise McKay Art, and I'm going to do another clock pour today. And this is from my uh, neighbor and friend up the street who's been helping me with bases, and I've been helping him with faces. And um, this is going to be interesting, but let me go over the colors real quick. This is Amsterdam's Titan Buff. You can see the consistency. That's mixed with the Josanya. This is mixed with Minwax. PM. I'll have the description below. Bordeaux Red, and you can see it's thicker. And I've even tried thickening it, thinning it down with Minwax, and I'm going to have to do some more. It's too thick. 24 karat gold. Golden's um, Quinacridone Nicolazzo Gold, and Golden's Anthraquinone Blue, which is also my Anthrax Blue. I'm going to use my white and black cell activator today. So all of these are mixed with the PM from Josanya and the Glidden. And this is the one that's mixed uh, with my old recipe with the Glidden and the Minwax, which I'll have to adjust. But before I get started, I wanted to show you this real quick. So this is a clock. I mean, I've got it taped down. And um, it's got a ridge in it, like, uh, like the trays. So I'm going to treat it like a tray, but I'm going to do a bloom in here. And I'm going to lay the base down similarly to the video where I had this square ceramic tile where I laid on a smaller base pillow and then I blew it out and then spun it out. So I'm going to trust that this container, I have to have enough paint to get to the edges, but I also don't want so much I'm sloshing and won't have it cracking. So what I did beforehand here, as you see, it's black. It was originally white. It's a piece of plastic, and I primed it with black because I'm going to be pouring with a black base, my tricorn. So if there's any sloppage or anything, it'll be less disguised, less noticeable with the black um, on here. Also, I want to just say that I'm doing a lot of, you know, bloom recipe ideas, not on campuses, but the, the technique and the process that you use with the bloom technique, with the uh, blooms and the blowouts or the swipes, it's all applica applicable to the canvases. I'm just applying it to a different substrate that actually can be more useful than just art on the wall. So, uh, and that was probably the best advice that the studio where I'm putting my art in now is given me is that is want functional art. So that's what I've been doing. I've got a whole closet full of canvases that I need to use up somehow. But in the meantime, I'm going for functional. But anyway, this is going to be for my friend up the street, and I hope he likes it. So let me get you down here in a second. I hear my heater's gonna be coming on in a minute, so I'll probably be voicing over again, but I just wanted to cover those things. And uh, I'll be back in a second. All right, everyone, so this was my first attempt, and I wanted to show you how much paint I have in there to start with. Now, with this black tricorn, it's much thinner paint than my Multi-Pro, and I know better, but I didn't know better when I made this. I laid down way too much paint. And in the end, I end up not going with the red because, frankly, when I got to the end and finished spinning it out after sloshing it all around inside this little container, it looked like a crime scene. <laughs> so I had to empty the container of all the paint. I recycled it, and I'm putting it back into the second attempt I'm going to do. So I just wanted to show you what I did here, what the final result was of this, and then I'm gonna move on to what the actual creation was here. Yeah, I got too much paint. Yeah, okay. All right, and it's thinner. So, and I do not like this at all. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna stop, I'm gonna clean this up, and I'm gonna come back and do it again. Because this paint is thinner, I put too much down, and I don't like the blowout. And there's nothing I can do about this here. The blow went too far into the pillow, and it came out black. And I have nowhere to go with this. So I will be back in a second after I've cleaned this up. Okay, so I'm back. Now, I didn't clean it up all the way. Because I'm going to leave some of it down there, and I'm going to... This is my scrap paint. I'm just going to go straight back in with it. And this is thicker. see how this does. So 
certainly not as dark as the tricorn. But I think thicker is necessary. All right, we'll put that over there. Okay. I'm gonna blow this one out with my lungs this time. Okay, let's uh, give this another whirl. Got rid of the red. I'm gonna put back in its place the, uh, the pearl green, pastel pearl green. I don't wanna to have to keep doing this thing over and over again. Yeah, I thought the red took over and uh, just didn't want to have it. I know the other combination is good. <clears throat> it's always so tricky. You just don't know what you're going to get all the time, you know, but you layer your experience and you try to foresee a, a good way. I want some of the green to show up, so I'm gonna go outside the lines a little bit here. And I just hope I can blow it out with my lungs. Middle. Okay. All right. I need to get my blow on. So while I'm blowing this out, I'm going to voice over here. So just put down the cell activator, the white and then the black. And then I'm getting a good breath because this is a bigger, bigger piece to blow into than a tile. And I'm just blowing it out. And I want to try to get that center cell activator to blow out as much in a circle as possible. And then once I start it going, I want to skim the cell activator over the paints and then the paints over the pillow. Now with the black here, it's always a little more of a challenge because it's much thinner paint than the Multi-Pro. And for me, I really prefer having much thicker paint. And I don't care how long I decant the black, it doesn't get thick enough. And then I'm going to jump ahead here for about a minute, letting the center recover itself. This is really weird. This happened on my tray as well. And what I end up with is these weird islands of cells. I don't know why. Okay, I'm gonna give the middle some time to come back. I need to do something here. So I'm gonna pick up the pace here. I'm using my palette knife to break up the black there where I blew too hard into the pillow. And then once I start playing with that, I end up going around the whole thing just to add a little interest by breaking up the composition a little bit and then I'll be ready to spin it out. So where that black pillow is showing through, I blew two straight down into the pillow. So when you're blowing it out, you wanna always think of trying to skim that cell activator over the paints. So you wanna be on an angle, not up above it as you're blowing it out. So 
so far I'm not hating this one. The last one was terrible. Oh. Now I'm spinning it gently because I don't want the color to roll over itself or minimally roll over. So just like when you tilt a canvas to try to get the paint to go in a certain direction, you do the same thing on a spinner. You just tilt it and let gravity pull the weight of the paint that direction. All right. See right here, it's about to roll over on itself and also over there. So let me just give a little bit of extra in those areas. So it has legs to spread without losing its color. I hope that makes sense. This is exactly what I do on a tile before I get ready to spin it out. If I don't have my paint all the way to the edges, I get it there. Okay. I hope having the other black in there is not gonna be a problem. Gentle spin. Keep an eye on things. Starting to get to the edge again. I'm gonna let it run. Here we go. Let's get to the edges now and we're gonna call you done. So I'm gonna cut ahead a little bit here, here and there as I just am watching it develop. It looks pretty good. You know what, it's draw time. All right, everyone, so again, I'm gonna pick up the pace here. I've got the straw. Now, all I'm trying to do throughout this whole section here is get the black pillow in the composition to reach the edge of the inside of this container. So that's all I'm doing. I'm switching straws out, and I eventually even start using a toothpick to get right up against the corners or edges. So I'll put on some music, and we'll be back in a minute. So one thing I'm going to throw in here is that every so often you want to switch out your straws because if you don't, you're going to end up getting spittle in the composition. So to avoid that, you just have a couple extra straws in the wings so you have something to go to. Here I'm just getting a toothpick and this is where I'm going to start just pushing the paint to the edge ever so gently. And I'm going to jump ahead through this part. Oh, I like it. And let's do one more in there. And I think we're going to call this done. I'm calling that done. So that's a wrap, everybody. Here's the final wet result. I hope you enjoyed the video, and despite the fact that I had to cut a lot out, but you got the gist. I left all the good, important points in. If you haven't subscribed yet, please subscribe, hit the bell, leave comments and thumbs up, and you'll get all my latest art tutorials. I'm going to leave off with the final clock creation by Bruce Reeks. And this Thursday, we're going to begin our four artist collaboration called Rock and Pour, starting at 6.30 Eastern Standard Time. See you then. Take care.